from the hit show Ugly Betty, America Ferrera. Plus the latest cast off from Dancing with the Stars and Motley Crue tears up the stage. All new Jimmy Kimmel Live, late night tonight on ABC. Tonight on Nightline, inside the walls at the Texas polygamist compound, secluded and hostile to outsiders, hardly anyone has been past the gates. We get a rare look inside a secret world. The wives and mothers of the sect speak out. They say they live in heaven on earth and that children who were taken from them were perfectly safe and loved. Plus, shoot to save? A year after Virginia Tech, could the tragedy have been stopped? Is this the answer? These students say yes. It's time to let them be armed. From the global resources of ABC News, with Terry Moran, Martin Bashir, and Cynthia McFadden in New York City, this is Nightline, April 15, 2008. Good evening, everyone. I'm Terry Moran. And tonight, a look at a slice of American life that's almost always hidden from view. Members of the polygamist sect, known as FLDS, are deeply wary of people who are not members. They don't talk to outsiders, the media included. And then, 416 children were taken from the group's Texas compound and into state custody, and kept in conditions the children's parents now say were unsanitary. The state relented, moved the children to a different shelter. But the mothers are not mollified. They want their children back. Neil Karlinski is in San Angelo, Texas, and he joins us now. Neil? Terry, good evening. This is the spot where hundreds of those children have been held inside this large coliseum filled with hundreds of cots and cribs. Now, since this case began, we've heard lots of allegations from state officials against the members of this polygamist sect that the children were taken from, but we haven't heard much from the members themselves, the people who actually live the lifestyle. Tonight, we will. From above, the sect's huge white temple is the centerpiece. It is the first thing you notice. But driving on to the yearning for Zion Ranch, it is the guard tower that catches your eye at the end of a long gated dirt road. And then there are the men, young men in sunglasses and jeans, men who don't come with an easy smile. At least they didn't during our rare trip inside. Where's the children? That's all I have to say. We were invited in just hours after many of the group's women were brought home, separated from their children, who remain in state custody for their own protection. We want our children. We want them back. Our children's purity is sacred to us. Our children are all we have left. Why do you think this is happening? What do you think is going on? We don't we do know. Our children know. are pure our children. and innocent. We need them. They are not abused. They are so well cared for, far better than where they are now. The women were emotional, but they were also awkwardly on display, placed before the news media by the sect. We were happy and peaceful here, and all of a sudden attacked put into an environment that was totally out of our... We, we couldn't even explain it. Shocking to the children. Speaking to them was surreal. They are mistrustful of the outside world and rarely leave the sprawling compound where they live as the elite of the fundamentalist polygamous movement. The authorities say that they're doing this. One of the reasons they're doing this is because young teenage girls have sex forced upon them and that they are forced into marriage here. That is a lie. They are not, they are not forced. Never. Do 14, 15, 16-year-old girls get married here? We, we are talking about our children. I understand, but that's the allegation that has led to this. That is why they've well, taken your kids from you. What are they doing with our children? But they does, say does that happen here? Are 16-year-old girls married to older men here? We, this is about our children. You if you'll just talk about our children. That's but that's why they're being taken away. Sally on the left and Marilyn in the middle are mother and daughter. How old were you when you were married? I do not feel to answer that right now. You don't want to answer that? Why? That's a very normal question to ask a person. How old were you when you were married? I want my children our children back. My daughter, I have one daughter, and I want her back. 
We also met a woman named Marie hugging a wooden beam and crying for her three children who are now in the hands of the state of Texas. And just to help people understand, because I think there isn't a great understanding yes. of what goes on yes. here. Do you share a husband with many other wives? I care not to answer that at this time. Why not? It is sacred to me. I take that to mean you do share a husband with other wives. It may or may not. While we spoke, other women peered out from nearby cabins, unaccustomed to the sight of strangers on their land. What is life like here? I don't think people can comprehend. Do you know the comprehend. definition of Zion? Tell me, please. Heaven on earth. Do you believe you live in heaven on earth? Yes, I do. A slice of heaven local authorities say is so abusive, they're trying to keep 416 children from coming back here, even if that means stripping them of their parents. You know, the allegations are that kids are being abused in here. I didn't realize that until after we were there, that that's what... They say kids are punished by being put in closets, they're beaten. No. Does that happen here? No. No. They have only been loved. But state officials insist they will prove a pattern of abuse here, saying that the 416 children who have been taken from their parents would be at risk if returned to their families. Terry? Well, Neil, so now the state of Texas is in custody of those 416 children. And I guess they're all going to come to court pretty soon. What, that, what is that going to be like? There's going to be an unprecedented court hearing here on Thursday. They're bringing in hundreds of lawyers. In fact, they've been flowing into this compound, the fairgrounds here, all day today to meet with their clients, the children, volunteer lawyers. It's not going to be an easy case for the judge. She's not going to decide right away. In fact, the identities of many of the children have still not been established. Many of these kids have changed their names day to day and pointed to different mothers and fathers, depending on the day that officials have asked them. An enormous legal challenge, a wrenching emotional story in that community. Neil Karlinski in San, Angel San Angelo, Texas, thanks for that. He'll stay on this story for ABC News. When we come back, the Virginia Tech student group that thinks the solution to outbreaks of campus violence is more guns on campus. If you could change the way wireless companies did things, what would you do? I'm Dan Hesse, the new CEO of Sprint. Here's our idea. Use your phone for all the great things it can do without worrying about the meter running. How's that for a wireless revolution? Pretty awesome, huh? Going berry picking? Pick Metamucil Berry Burst. It has that ripe, succulent berry flavor. And it's infused with 100% natural psyllium fiber. Metamucil Berry Burst. Beautify your inside. Back pain? You don't have to just rely on pain relievers. Now you can take two of these. Dr. Scholl's Pain Relief Orthotics with Shock Guard. They're clinically proven and absorb jarring shock with every step you take. Take Dr. Scholl's for back pain or knee pain. I first saw this one when I was traveling through Prague. Geico probably thinks this is easy, too. Dancing is good exercise. It works my glutes. Okay, America, I'll show you easy. Tonight, Jimmy's locked in a star-studded lineup. Trying to get Oprah to come, but she won't fly coach. From the hit show Ugly Betty, America Ferreira. Plus the latest cast off from Dancing with the Stars. And Motley Crue tears up the stage. All new Jimmy Kimmel Live, coming up on ABC. They're America's favorite family. And all new Brothers and Sisters, Sunday on ABC. Have you ever called the home security company and tried to get prices over the phone? They won't give them, since they'd rather send a salesperson to your house to pressure you into signing a contract and sell you unnecessary equipment. At Alarm Force, we're happy to answer all your questions over the phone. Call today for free live two-way voice with every system. Call 
1-800-267-2001. Alarm Force. Ohio's best choice for home security. Now, here's a question for you. Should people be allowed to carry concealed handguns on college campuses? Tomorrow marks one year since a mentally ill young man took 32 lives and then his own at Virginia Tech University. A lot of people might think that keeping guns off campus is a step towards greater safety, but what if that's not true? Thousands of students around the country say campus safety would be enhanced if they were allowed to carry guns around. And some of those students go to Virginia Tech. The memories are still raw. On that windy April day last year, when death descended on Virginia Tech, students, faculty, and staff confronted one of America's worst nightmares, a mad, broken young man armed to the teeth. Hokie Nation, as they call this close-knit community, came together, rallied and mourned with dignity and a distinctive spirit. One year later, the Virginia Tech campus is once again an idyllic place and Norris Hall, where 30 people were murdered by Song Hui Cho and where he took his own life, is being transformed into a center for peace studies and violence prevention. How emotional has this gotten? So it might shock you to learn that for some students here, the answer to Cho's gun rampage is this. That's Ken Stanton, a 30-year-old engineering graduate student at Virginia Tech, and the head of the Students for Concealed Carry on campus. A lot of people don't understand the aspect of carrying self-defense. That's right. What Stanton wants Virginia Tech students to be able to carry are concealed handguns to defend themselves from muggers, rapists, even deranged school shooters like Cho. It was probably the one thing that could have turned the tables. Many people tried to attack Cho while, during this and stop him. People closed doors, threw things at him. We've heard numerous stories of people trying to physically stop him and were still unable to. It's a tough sell in a community as traumatized by gun violence as Virginia Tech. But Stanton is convinced guns in the hands of licensed, responsible students would make the campus safer. Do you think parents would think twice about sending their kids to a school which allows for concealed weapons to be carried? Um, that's one reason this is an educational campaign, because the, the first reaction might be, oh my gosh, there are going to be guns on campus. But if you flip that around and understand that there are people there ready to defend themselves and possibly others if there's an attack. It actually becomes a safer place to be in that, in that sense. Keep that finger pointing out, away from it. The educational campaign today begins with me, a complete novice when it comes to handguns. To demonstrate how responsible gun owners behave, Ken and Steve Davids, president of the school's pistol and rifle club, give me a lesson. Good. Yep. Finger off the trigger. Good. At least slide lock. Two hands. Line up and then put the finger on the trigger. Yep. Yep. Afterwards, Ken Stanton wanted to make a point. Now, how did you feel about how that was? Was that manageable for you to shoot? Yes, it was. I mean, look, I'm not... Uh, right, I mean, I'm surely you're not an expert, but you did very well with handling it and controlling it. But this is the realistic size that someone would conceal. So despite the fact that this is not a large, heavy weapon that would be very, you know, um, able to handle, uh, um, you know, the, the recoil, this is something small, it was still manageable for you to carry and to handle. And that, and to aim you think, means it's a safe weapon for people to carry around. Right. Stanton's group, Students for Concealed Carry on Campus, is a nationwide movement that claims 25,000 members, and it organizes, as most advocacy groups on campus do nowadays, on Facebook. There are 11 campuses across the country that allow students to carry concealed weapons. One of them, Blue Ridge Community College, is just an hour away from Virginia Tech. 
There's never been a shooting. There's never been a stolen gun. There's never been any of these, you know, speculatory situations where we say, oh, everything is going to go wrong.